Welcome to Software Defined Everything, the podcast for smart world systems. I'm Steven Onzo, your host. And today I'm joined by Bert Faribaugh, Director of Field Application Engineering for RTI. Bert, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Can you provide our listeners with a quick overview of your background and current role in the software industry? Yeah, so I, um, I started my career uh, working in robotics. I did robotics, uh, basically unmanned ground systems and, and pallet uh, moving systems for about 14 years. Um, and I transitioned over into software. So that was mostly a hardware background. And then I transitioned into software and in 2003, uh, joined up here with RTI and have been a field application engineer working with, uh, RTI and getting to know, uh, lots of different customer applications out there. And since the last five years, I've been the director of uh, field application engineering here at RTI. We're here to talk about popular communication protocols, DDS, MQTT being two of them. I want to talk about their similarities and their differences in terms of architecture, performance, and suitability. But first, can you give a short introduction to DDS and MQTT for those who may be unfamiliar with one or both of those standards? Sure. The The best way to give an introduction is to actually look at the names for DDS and MQTT. Uh, DDS stands for Data Distribution Service for Real-Time Systems. Uh, it was built for uh, the distribution of information across applications running in real-time. And real-time, in this particular case, is uh, anything that's a mission-critical system that has to make decisions in, in less than a second, and less than tenths of a second, more in the milliseconds. It needs to make uh, decisions of what to do, whether to move a, an actuator in a particular location or something of that. Uh, we like to say that DDS is the right data where you want it, when you need it. And MQTT uh, stands for Message Queue Telemetry Transport. And the key words there being telemetry and transport. And for MQTT, telemetry is basically the reporting of field information or field data uh, back to uh, an entity that is going to do analytics on that information. It doesn't need to make decisions in milliseconds. It's really just collect the, the provision for the collection of data so that it can be analyzed uh, either offline or, or near real time, but nothing, nothing like what you would get in a mission critical application. It's mostly done in the cloud. The other word transport means it's just a framework for sending and receiving data. It's not data aware like uh, DDS is. So uh, data awareness means that the infrastructure understands the information and can act on the information and can actually provide filtering for your applications uh, based on the content of information that you're sending without having to write any code to do that work for you. So architecture plays a critical role in software development. Considering the requirements of modern autonomous systems, how would you start to design a future-proof architecture? And what role does the infrastructure software have in such an architecture? What we like to say here is always start with the data or build out a data model that represents the information that is flowing in your application or moving between your application. This is also known as a, a data-centric design. Uh, data-centric designs have existed for quite some time, actually. Anything that uh, uses a database today is built on a data-centric design. Uh, someone can build a, a database application today, and literally 10 years from now or 20 years from now, a new developer can come on to that project and write an application that interfaces with that data that was defined many decades ago. And that's the beauty of it, is that the data is the interface, not the applications are the interface. And so uh, once you've defined your data and your data flows, and that's what DDS is really, or, or um, mission critical applications require, is the definition of the flow of data. You also need to determine what the latency is requirement for each of your flows. You need to determine what the throughput requirements are for each of your flows of data. You need to understand the fan out or scalability 
that's required for each of your flows of data. And then once you combine that data definition along with these uh, requirements of latency and throughput and scalability, that will define your architecture. And you could end up with a mixed architecture where both DDS is being used for the mission critical side of things and MQTT is being used to uh, provide the telemetry of data. But um, each one is really providing a different capability. And so that's where I would start is with the data. MQTT follows a message-centric, broker-based publish-subscribe model, while DDS follows a peer-to-peer, data-centric publish-subscribe model. Can you explain a scenario where the data-centric approach of DDS would be more advantageous over a message-centric approach? Uh, certainly. So you mentioned a broker-based. Uh, MQTT uses a broker to basically, or a broker is really just uh, an application that sits in between your applications that are sending data and your applications that are receiving data. And this broker basically collects the information that's being published and then forwards it on to the applications that require it. Uh, this is great for uh, making applications kind of agnostic or unaware of where the data is going. They just have to be responsible for publishing it. Uh, but it does provide issues as far as uh, latency delays or issues in uh, throughput degradation, especially when you need it the most. You need it the most, and typically you need it the most when uh, your application is in a critical design or a critical uh, decision point, and uh, the broker is basically overloaded because more information is needed to get through that decision point. And that overloading of that broker then will bring your throughput down. It also provides a single point of failure. So if that broker fails, all of your applications stop communicating with each other. That is not the case with a peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Also, uh, a broker provides a single security vulnerability point as well. So if someone was trying to hack into an application, they would have to only hack into the broker and could then affect the operation of anything. Uh, with a peer-to-peer -peer architecture, each, each application is really connected directly with each other application. And so data flows directly from the publisher to subscriber. You don't have the issues of latency uh, delays. You don't have the issues of throughput delays. Uh, you don't have single points of failure. If one element goes down, it doesn't stop all of the other elements from communicating with each other. And uh, DDS also provides quality of service for defining the behavior of the delivery of data. And DDS is unique in that way uh, because uh, the definition of QoS is, is actually, um, there's, there's a few technologies out there. MQTT has, has a, a couple of QoS points that you can define. It's mostly around reliability. Uh, but DDS provides much, much more with regards to defining the behavior of the delivery of data. That's a great segue because that's actually related to my next question. The flexibility of quality of service, or as we call QoS, can you discuss a project where you've leveraged QoS policies to optimize the system performance? Sure. Uh, let's take a look at uh, one of the newer applications of today, like automotive autonomous driving having a car drive for you, for you. Well, it needs lots of different kinds of data inside that application. So there's some data like video. And so video requires high throughput sending, of, sending and receiving of data and probably with compression built in. And there's other data like LiDAR uh, point clouds that uh, basically perceiving all of the various objects that might be in front of you or beside you that you might have a chance to run into. And so you need to perceive those. Um, and so you need to perceive those extremely fast. And so therefore low latency is required for that type of data. And then there's other types of data like events and alarms that require high reliability. Uh, you need to know when an alarm is gonna happen that you're gonna get that alarm and that none are ever lost or events, that none of those events are ever lost. And so high reliability is required for that. And so these are uh, just some of the quality of service that in various data types. Sorry. Sorry. 
what were the specific QoS policies you found to work the best in that context? And, and how did they impact the overall performance of the system? Reliability settings is one of the key uh, re- uh, settings that you can have in, in a mission critical application for defining whether data needs to be best effort or strict reliable or some other level of reliability in between those two. Uh, durability for accessing uh, pre-existing data, uh, deadline for defining the minimum frequency that you would send data, liveliness for knowing that a component is alive and, and working or not working. Uh, there's Within DDS, there's 24 high-level quality of service policies. These are just a few of those. Uh, and the combination of all of these QoS is what enables application and data flows to be defined appropriately for the requirements of the applications that are using those data flows. DDS and other technologies are similar in how they deliver data to distributed systems, but they're also different in their approaches to interoperability and and other factors. Can you compare and contrast how DDS and MQTT address interoperability challenges, especially when integrating diverse hardware and software platforms? So MQTT only provides pretty much an API compatibility between implementations. So one vendor's implementation would not be able to talk directly to another vendor's implementation of MQTT. So that means if I were to go build an application leveraging MQTT, I would be locked into a single vendor for all the communications. DDS, however, it also does provide an API interoperability, so you can uh, go between vendor implementations, but it also provides an on-the-wire protocol interoperability as well, so that different modules built by different vendor implementations can also talk to each other. It also provides a way to define the data so that the applications can know what information is coming from the publishers and what information is coming being uh, requested by the by the subscribers so that they can operate and interoperate with each other. So uh, yeah, DDS provides a lot more uh, interoperability and definition. Uh, it does take a little bit longer to to define that system, but you're much more reliable going forward knowing that your applications are going to interoperate. And finally, how do you foresee the evolution of communication models shaping the future? of software defined systems. What what emerging trends or technologies do you think will have the most significant impact on the design and implementation of these systems in the future? Personally, I think uh, artificial intelligence AI uh, being used as a tool for the de- defining of workflow and actually for the development of code will probably have the largest impact on the creation and definition of data infrastructure. And that's not going to be isolated to just uh, DDS and MQTT. That'll be prevalent in all applications, uh, distributed applications going forward. And I think uh, leveraging and harnessing the power of AI today as a tool uh, is is the way of definitely the way of the future and and what we need to be addressing now so that we can leverage the capabilities uh, to make our applications much more reliable, much more efficient, much more capable uh, uh, of providing the features and capabilities that we that we require in the future. Uh, surgical robots uh, leverage uh, algorithms today for moving, uh, very fine instruments, very small distances. That was not possible five, ten years ago that is available today. And algorithms and the development of algorithms, which I would say is also the development of AI, uh, helps go towards that. And it's also going to be the same thing when it comes to the development of uh, infrastructure applications. So, uh, yeah, Going forward, there's going to be less and less developers that are uh, around that have the experience of building these mission-critical applications. 
and AI is just going to be used as a tool to help the developers that are around uh, to go off and create those applications in fractions of the time with higher efficiency. This will, however, require uh, an emphasis to be put on the testing of those applications that are created by AI, the integration of those applications. And so where, uh, where AI can help, it's also going to provide the need for uh, human interaction and human ver validation and verification going forward. So, Great. Well, and with that, we conclude today's episode of Software Defined Everything. But before we go, I'd like to ask you one last question, Bert. What's one recommendation you have for our listeners? It could be a book, a travel destination, a restaurant in your area, and anything you think that's worth sharing. I guess I'll go with the travel destination. Uh, my family and I recently, uh, a few years back, uh, had a chance to travel to northern Italy and spend some time at Lake Como and also around Milan and Torino and it was just the most wonderful trip I've ever taken. The scenery is just amazing. The food is even better. Uh, the, the atmosphere is just what a time to relax and just enjoy uh, a, a beautiful uh, environment. So, yeah, I would recommend uh, Northern Italy as, as a great travel destination. I'm sold. It's been added to the bucket list. Well, uh, I'd like to uh, extend a big thanks to Bert Faribaugh for joining us on the podcast. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope to have you back on uh, sometime soon. Thanks, Bert. Thank you, Stephen.